What is going on, guys? Welcome back to We Want Picks. My name is Jacob, aka the Freckled Salamander, here to bring you my quick pick video for you, FC Denver. But before we get into this week's quick pick video, make sure you go to WeWantPicks.com. Become a premium member today. It's only ten dollars a month. I've been killing it, man. Oh, I mean, I've been killing it. Lack of the week's been destroying. I've only missed two picks in the last two cards combined. I think that's 23 and two, something like that. I don't know how many fights there's been. I've been on absolute fire, on an absolute tear. Make sure you go to WeWonePicks.com. Become a premium member today to see what this week's plays are. You get my plays, Angel's plays, Artem plays, all sorts of different stuff. We just added new tools. I don't even know what's all on the website. We're just adding stuff all the time. Check it out. Ten dollars a month, and I'm telling you right now, UFC Denver. I'm gonna take a little. I'm gonna take a little. A, a little word from Angelo's book right now. It's a tricky card, man. A lot of tricky fights, and you're gonna hear a lot of breakdowns. Where I'm a little bit wishy washy, and I'll be honest, I don't think there's a lot of breakdowns this week where there's a lot of technical analysis. It's gonna be a lot of gut feeling. It's gonna be a lot of intangibles. So sit back, relax. I'm gonna try to break it down for you. The breakdown, the full card, quick pick video for UFC Denver starts right meow first up we got josh friend versus andre petrovsky and this is the first one where it's like i'm gonna tell you right now this isn't a premium play this is a personal play the reason i'm not putting it as a premium play because i don't trust this gentleman that i bet on but i have 150 dollars on josh Fram as a slight favorite i think i've got a minus 150 something like that and that's not a bet on josh Fram. that is a bet against andre petrovsky can andre petrovsky knock this guy out of course he can he's a big dude that swings heavy that's about all he's gonna do in my mind in this fight i think this guy is absolutely overrated i think he's kind of terrible he just wings right hands until he gets tired which normally takes about four minutes it's probably going to take about two minutes in elevation in denver and then once he's tired he tries to wrestle and if he can't wrestle he's going to really struggle on this matchup i think josh frame can keep that length keep that distance wait for this guy to get tired and then start teeing off on him and maybe counter wrestle himself i think andre petrovsky is not good at all I bet against him for that reason. Again, it's not really a bet for Josh Frank because Josh Frank's not like this this absolute killer, but he should be able to survive the first two or three minutes of Andre Petrosi just bombing right hands and then withstand the wrestling after that. So I'm going with Josh Frank here. I feel pretty good about it. Again, not a bet on Frank, more of a bet against Petrosi. It's not a premium play. It's just a personal play for me, 150 bucks. We'll see how it plays out. Let's move on to the next one. Montel Jackson versus Damon Blackshear. This should be a good fight, man. This should be a really good back and forth affair. I expect, I fully expect this to go all three rounds. And in a three round fight at elevation, I believe that Damon Blackshear is going to get it done. Now, I know Montel Jackson can wrestle. He's a good wrestler. But this dude, Damon, is kind of relentless. And I believe that his level of competition is what is going to win him in these fights. He's been in some wars with some really good people. Now, Montel has kind of been steamrolling people, but that level of competition just quite isn't there. I don't believe that he's really been pressured by a high level, not really a high level wrestler, but a high level grappler in this ride. I think Damon's going to get on him early, wear this guy down again, at elevation and if push comes to shove and this is a 1-1 fight going into the third i believe that damon is going to be the one to kind of muscle those takedowns get the control to win this fight it's probably gonna be a razor close fight could be a split decision back and forth with the wrestling with the grappling i pray to god that damon doesn't play the guard game on his back with montel on top but I'm going Damon here. I just think he's got that little bit of edge. Again, a lot of these breakdowns are going to be not super tactical. It's going to be a little bit of a gut feeling. What I see in tape. And you know I'm pretty good at picking out my dogs. And I think in this matchup, Damon Blackshear is a little bit more of a dog than Montel. I'm going with the dog here. Damon Blackshear to get it done. Let's move on to the next one. Ana Santos versus Maria Agapova. Luana, these odds are exploding. I got her minus 270, minus 275 as a premium play. We want picks.com. Only $10 a month. She's ballooned all the way almost to minus 400. I think minus 275 is right probably where it should be because she is a wild girl. And again, broken record at elevation. If she gets into a situation where she is almost dominating too much in the first round and doesn't find that finish, 
The second and third rounds of this fight could be sloppy back and forth and could be a toss-up, but she should be the much better fighter. Do enough in the stand-up. I know she's a little bit wild in the stand-up, but I don't think oh, Agapova's going to any, have anything to hurt her. And she's going to get in those clinch positions, use her judo. You saw last fight, struggled a little bit with Stephanie Yeager. That was up in weight against Stephanie, who is a judo like national champion. And Luana was still able to kind of handle her and, and get some throws in. Against Agapova, she should should be able to get these throws in. She looks great physically. Back down to 125. Looks like she's rededicated herself to the game. I think she's going to get those throws, get on top, and use that ground game that she knows how to use. So I am all over Luana. I do have... I'll be honest, I have a lot of money on Luana because I had her in parlays. The parlays got dropped. So I'm kind of loaded on Luana. I definitely feel better at my price, minus 275, than some people are going to get at minus 350, minus 400, whatever it ends up being. I'm on Luana here. Let's move on to the next one. Jasmine Juzhevich versus Fatima Klein. And this one, again, this is not going to be a technical breakdown. Right, I understand that Klein came in, opened up as a plus 210, flipped all the way, I think, to a minus 150. The odds are closing a little bit. I'll be straight up and honest. You want a little premium bet here? It's just a little sprinkle, right? A little half unit. I did grab Jazz at plus 145 because this girl, I understand Klein's got wrestling, and she's probably going to be a little bit of the cleaner striker, and people love her coming into this fight. I mean, to get bet from a plus 200 all the way to minus 150, people absolutely love And that happened, boom, within like 15, 20, half an hour, something like that. People love her in this match. Here's why I don't love her in this matchup. Short notice, elevation, broken record, up in weight, and she's with that Aaron Blanchfield camp. And I, you know, I, I have a, this might be a biased pick, but I have a bias against Aaron Blanchfield in that camp. Listen, Aaron is a tough girl, a good girl, but you saw and listened to her corner in that fight. They're fucking clueless. They are absolutely fucking clueless. And they are going to hold Aaron back. Aaron's got to leave that fucking camp. It's the same corner, the same camp that's going to have Klein in this situation. Again, technical analysis outside the window. I believe that this probably is a close fight in the first round. It probably might be a close fight in the second round. But when these girls get tired, when push comes to shove, and I got to put my money on a fucking dog... I'm putting on Jazz. I'm putting on Jazz 10 out of 10 times. This girl means absolute fucking business, and she will find a way to win this fight. And I love the fact that she came in. I bet her as the favorite versus Vivi, right? I'm going to bet her as a dog versus short notice opponent. She's going to get this done. I love the fact that she came in, and now she's a dog. Uh, she, she sees that, right? This short notice girl coming in, undersized girl, right? She might get a takedown or two in the first, but Jazz is going to outwork those girls. She's been training for this fight. Stay vicious. I like Jazz in this to get it done. Let's move on to the next one. Joshua Vey versus Charles Johnson. Let me first off say it. I understand Charles Johnson was a former lock of the week just a few weeks ago, however long that was. I like Charles Johnson. I like Joshua Van. Joshua Van is a very good fighter, a very young, green fighter. And I mention that because I think people forget that this kid is only 22 years old. This isn't a fraud check situation. This isn't a, 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 a whatever people are going to say. If he loses this fight to Charles Johnson, be like, oh, Joshua Van. He's 22 years old. If he wins this fight, it's a great win for him against a somewhat short notice opponent Charles Johnson right at elevation if he comes in and beats a guy especially if he finishes Charles Johnson that's an incredible win because Charles Johnson is a veteran a durable guy that's gonna be there probably for all three rounds now I will say this as well I do like Joshua Van I think he's a little bit overrated I think he's a little bit over but that's not that's not any. That's not trashing the guy. He's only 22. He's he, he, he can figure this out, right? He's not gonna. He's not a guy that's gonna take crazy amount of damage. He's a very good boxer. I think he gets a little bit over aggressive in the grappling. I don't believe he's gonna be able to take down Charles Johnson. Charles Johnson's a very hard guy to take down. This is probably gonna be a be a typical Charles Johnson fight, a back and forth striking affair, split decision, all three rounds. I think the value there is in Charles Johnson. I believe that he has that dog in him. Not saying that Joshua Van. Does doesn't but when this goes three rounds at elevation in that third round i think it's gonna be charles johnson's gonna flip that switch just a little bit more it's a close fight i don't feel great about it i have not bet charles johnson but as a pick i'm going with the veteran savviness of charles johnson to find a way to win this decision all the respect in the world for joshua van i know people are gonna be like oh you're fucking clueless whatever it is i just think this is a little bit much 2022 we'll see how it plays out he's good I'm going Charles Johnson. Let's move on. Odie, my man, Brundage versus Abdul Razak Alassan. 
I'm going Cody, man. I, I, I'm not going to pick against Cody. Cody's gotten this far against Zach Reese. Slammed that dude through the fucking canvas. Right? I picked him against Bo Nickel as well. Threw, threw Bo Nickel into the fucking fence. Landed a nice shot. Bo Nickel all of a sudden turned into this super desperate wrestler because he knew he didn't want to stay in with Cody Brundage. I think Cody's going to go back to what he knows, right? This is at Elevation. He trains Factory X. He's a Denver guy. He's a wrestler at his core. I believe he's going to go back to what he knows, and that is wrestling from the jump. Get this guy on the ground. Wear him out, and that is where he is going to win this fight. If he tries to stand and bang with Abdul, it could get a little bit dicey early. Right, could be a little bit dicey early, but I think the takedowns are going to be there. Get on this guy's hips. Let's wear him down. Use your experience at elevation to your advantage, and that's how I see it playing out. Cody Brunage with a second round finish, or maybe ride this guy out for three rounds. I'm going Cody Brunage here, but I fully respect the dangers that Abdul Razak Alassane brings to this matchup. He's a judo guy that's got big power, kind of low volume. I'm going Cody here to use the wrestling early, go back to what he knows, and get it done as the dog. Let's move on to the next one. Rod versus Julian Arosa. Listen, I'm not a big C-Rod guy, right? I, I had Isaac Dolgarian against him. It was, you know, don't remind me, right? But this guy... In this type of situation, feels like a safe play to me. I know Julian Arosa's got some missions. He's a wild dude. But the way that C-Rod fight just seems to fit so well in a fight at elevation. Broken record again. But to be able to get those takedowns, get that control. I know Julian's always going to be live for those submission type whatever. The front chokes and the long limbs and stuff like that. But I think that this could look like. We saw Yusuf Zalal coming against Billy Q, and people liked Billy Q in that fight, right? It felt like Yusuf was a little bit undersized, a little bit lower volume, all this type of stuff. And Yusuf came in, got the takedowns to the control, and really dominated that fight, ended up finding a submission win. I think the same thing's going to happen here. C-Rod's going to win the wrestling, get to those those advantageous, advantageous positions, wear down a guy like Julian Rosa, and maybe find a submission as well, second, maybe even third round. I'm going with C-Rod here. I just don't think Julian Rosa is that guy anymore. And C-Rod, I don't really love him, but he's just so methodical, man. It's hard to, it's, it's hard to pick against him, I'll be honest. I'm going to C-Rod. Let's move on to the next one. Bonveen versus Angelosa. I know Angelosa pretty well, right? The guy can wrestle. He's got big power. He's not a quitter, right? Unless he gets poked in the eye. If he gets poked in the eye, obviously it seems like he's a little bit of a quitter, but he does get tired. But when he gets tired, he doesn't really quit. He's going to keep trying to push through the tiredness, but this guy does slow down. The issue I have with Angelosa, I know a lot of people are going to try to pick Angelosa because Bonfim and all of he gases and this and that and what happens to this and it's at elevation, blah, blah, blah. In my mind, Angelosa might shoot a takedown and get guillotined fucking immediately. This guy doesn't seem to have the highest IQ in the world. We've had, we've seen him with when he's had guys hurt and he's shooting takedowns. I think Bonfim's going to get in his face. He might shoot off the pressure. And if you're shooting against this guy, Bonfim, he's going to find a way to choke you out, get on your back, whatever it is. So I'm going Bonfim here. Obviously, there's some red flags if this extends, but even Angelosa is going to slow down as well. So even if this turns sloppy late, I think that Angelosa could still be the one that makes the mistakes that, that Bonfim's going to capitalize on. I still think Bonfim's a pretty good prospect. You know, we'll see if he runs through a guy like Angelosa here. Angelosa's good. He's a well-rounded guy, but in this fight, I think the mismatch, I think, I think the matchup makes fights, and the matchup really isn't there for him against a guy like Bonfim. So I'm going Bonfim here, but I'm not betting on, you know, minus 400. I'm, I'm not putting money on Bonfim just yet. Let's pause on that. Let's move on to the next one. Dober versus John Silva. I think it's Gian. I think he's supposed to say Gian Silva. Let me just say this. Drew Dober sucks. I mean, he just isn't. He just sucks. I mean, Drew Dober sucks, man. And I don't know how else I can put that plainly. The guy's got 13 wins. He's a tough dude. Been finished six times. He's just known for eating shots. I mean, you're known for eating shots like a Yiri. Right, these guys have eventually just start getting put out left and right, and against a guy like John Silva, you don't want to be known for eating shots. I'll tell you that you don't want to be known for eating shots against John Silva. I know that this is short notice. I know that this is up and away for John Silva. I don't think it fucking matters, man. Now, Drew Dober, I picked against him before. Uh, he was my uh, my anti lock of the week. I had Matt for Vola, and I've never been trashed so much. I think that was one of the most polarizing lock of the weeks of all time when I picked Matt for Vola to beat Drew Dober. Everyone's like, oh my god, how the fuck end up fucking knocking this dude out? I think the same thing happens here. Drew Dober comes in, tries to put the pressure on, the counter shots are there, and John Silva fucking puts this guy 
out. So I'm, I'm going John Silva here. I literally just don't think Drew, Do Drew, Drew Dober is that good. I mean, his striking is okay. I know he's got the power. He's got the chin. He might be able to return a shot if he eats a shot. I mean, you, John Silva's going to win. Next one. Santiago Ponzinibbio versus Muslim Selikov. You know, old guys. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that uh, that I broke down film on this over and over and over and I'm looking for tendencies and I'm looking for this. It's a couple old fucking dudes that are over the hill. Neither one of them's that great. I'm going Ponza Nibio because I just think that he's just a little bit faster. But who knows? And this uh, the odds should be a pick em. There's no doubt about that. I'm not betting Ponza Nibio at minus 200, minus whatever, minus 170, whatever the fuck. Fuck it is. There's no way I'm putting money on Pons Nubia at that at that point. This is up it is elevation, broken record. Who knows what this fight is gonna turn into? I'm not gonna sit here and act like I fucking know what's going on in this fight. I'm going Pons Nubia, but that's flipping a fucking coin. Who gives a fuck about that fight? We're going on to the main event, baby. Main event time. Rose Nama Junis versus Tracy Cortez. Am I a little bit biased in this fight? I might be a little bit biased if you guys don't know. Right? Rose fought the man, the he boss, in our last fight, main event at the Apex. I was there, sitting front row on the couch. You can see the poster behind me right there. If you listen to that fight, there was a point in that fight where I'm yelling at Jason Herzog, Stop the fight, Jason! Because the man, the he boss, was beating the brains in of Rose Namanudis. You want some honesty time? When that first, when that fight was first rumored, it was supposed to be on UFC 300. It was rumored on that little picture. I was like, why the fuck? Would Amanda Hebos take that fight versus Rose? Because that's one of the worst matchups she could ever have. Somebody that can stay at range and strike and tee off on her because Amanda is a very hittable person and Amanda struggles to get into the clinch positions, doesn't really have wrestling, only has the judo. And then the fight was announced and I was like, oh God. And then when I'm going to the fight, I'm getting ready to go to the arena, I was preparing myself to see Amanda Hebos get knocked out in the first round because Rose, that's what she should have done to be flat out and honest with you is she was served on a silver platter amanda hebos because that matchup was horrible for amanda and what happened amanda came in typical amanda tough as shit walking forward walking through the shots found a way to get the fight to the ground a few times got a little bit over aggressive in the grappling but she nearly won that fight and some people that watched that thought she won that fight now what does that tell me that tells me that rose is fucking fucking you know plinko da, 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 or the fucking da, 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 the price is right game da, 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 and then you oh and then you fall off the cliff well rose was that da, 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 oh she's a champion she lost well she's a champion again da, 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 and then she fights amanda he boss it uh, that's the fall halfway through the fall is fighting amanda he boss because she looked fucking awful in that fight and she is degressing is that the word? Degressing like crazy ever since she left Trevor Whitman and she's with Fat Barry now who has no idea what the fuck is he, he's doing, right? This guy uh, coached Alonzo Menafield. It took him eight rounds to beat a guy, Jimmy Crew. They're trying to wrestle Jimmy Crew for no goddamn reason. Then Alonzo Menafield comes in and he's like just blitzing Olberg for no reason, gets knocked out. Fat Barry has no idea how to fucking coach. Rose is a shell of what she used to be and Tracy Tracy Cortez means fucking business. I promise you that. You can tell in the way that she has progressed through her fights. Her striking is improving. She's not necessarily relying all in on the wrestling. And people are going to be like, oh, five rounds. Dang it. You get five rounds now. Who gives a fuck if it's five rounds? She's got to win three of them. I think if it's a three-round fight, Tracy Cortez 30-27s or so you just fucking win the th first three rounds. Fuck around for the next two. And guess what? You still won the fight. I ain't him going Tracy Cortez in this matchup because I think she's going to bring the pressure and Rose is probably going to bring in that dumbass game plan that she had against Carla dance around Rose they're booing Rose you're doing great because they're booing Rose dance around try to avoid the takedowns but this is going to be the time where Tracy Cortez isn't going to be Carla Esparza she's going to get in her face she's going to be the one walker now she's going to mix in the takedowns Amanda threw her ass down on the ground couldn't really control her got over aggressive in the grappling Tracy Cortez is more position over submission if she gets into the ground she's going to keep her on the ground Tracy Cortez is going to win this fight I've been on fire lately and I promise you this, 
Actually, I'm not gonna pro I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna promise anyway. But I think Tracy Cortez is gonna win the fight. I did put a bet on her plus 195, something like that. If you want to see the rest of my bets, Angela's plays, Aaron plays, everyone else's plays, whatever it is, the entire website, we want picks.com. It's only ten dollars a month. I've been running hot. And maybe we come back to reality on this card. We'll see. I know I'm playing this card pretty safe. These picks aren't crazy confidence. But we'll see how it plays out. Appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you like the video. Subscribe if you are new. My name is Jacob, a.k.a. The Frank Asylum, and I'm out. Peace.